Hello, and welcome to my tutorial series on how to make a 2D platformer in Unity. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a main menu with buttons that when you push one, it will play our application and send us to our first scene. And another button that will quit the application when we push it. Let's begin. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take care of something that a lot of people in the comments section have been asking about for a while that I probably should have addressed a while ago. And that is going to be our, actually let's go back into Unity and just show what we are going to fix. And that's our sort of, we can't really jump that well right now. We try to jump and we have to wait till we slow down and stuff and we can't run and jump. So we're gonna fix that real quick and it's actually a very easy fix. And we're going to go down here to our movement function. And we're simply going to put where it says zero, we're going to put rb.velocity.y. And we're going to put here the same thing, rb.velocity.y. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to wait for it to load. We're going to play, and now we can run and jump a little better. Now I got up my power up, so I can jump real high. It's going to go over, I'm sorry, off in a second. And now I can move around a little better. So that fixes that. So let's go ahead and make our new scene. Let's go here into Scenes under our Assets folder. Let's right-click. Let's go up to Create and it will just simply say scene and we'll call this one main menu and we'll go ahead and we'll open it and right here we'll have a brand new blank scene so up here what we're going to do is we're going to right click go all the way down to ui and then go all the way down to panel to create a panel and we'll just leave it being called panel right now and that will automatically open a canvas and an event system just like the last time we created a UI element. And as you'll see, I'll go to the scene. It has already given us a blank background here. And you can go ahead and find something you want to use for your background. It could just be another PNG file. I'm just going to leave this right here for now. Actually, I changed my mind. I will change the name of this panel. Where's rename? Right here. And I'm simply going to call it background because that's pretty much what it is so also in our canvas we're going to click on our canvas and we're going to go down to ui again and then we have these two button features right here and one says button and one says text mesh pro if you see right here i have the text mesh pro add-on in mine so if you were to click on text mesh pro it's going to a box is going to appear up here that's going to allow you to download this file to use Text Mesh Pro. But I'm going to show you both of them and how I'm going to set it up is going to work with either of them. So we're going to go back to UI and the first one I'm going to look at is just the regular button. And then I'm just going to simply just click OK and just keep it as button because I'm going to change it in a second. So as you can see right here is just text and this is similar to the text we were using inside of the other scene that we created. Actually, I'll just go right here. It's going to ask me to save. So I'm going to go to sample, actually. And then right here in our sample scene, we used up here for our canvas. These were just regular text. So going back to main menu. I'm going to go back to our canvas. And we go back to our button and this text file. And just like the other one, you can change the font style, whether you want a bold, italic, or whatnot, um, and its positioning, centering it on the button itself. When we zoom in on it a little bit, it just says button. We're gonna probably make this a little bigger. We can set it to centering horizontally and vertically. And so, and also, we also have color here to use for our color wheel. So right now it's black, we can change it if I just click it, we can change it to red. We'll just leave this one black for right now. And we're going to go over here and I'm just going to delete this button and I'm going to show you 
the text mesh pro go back down to ui again down to button text mesh pro i'm gonna be using this one so i simply just push play oh, i'm sorry call it play and right here is our text and as you can see we have quite another excuse me quite a few more options here in terms of our the style and some of the coloring we can add to it which i'll save for another day or another separate video I'm simply going to call this one play and i'm just going to simply make it bold and no i won't leave it italic bold is just fine and i'm going to how big is this actually i'm going to make our button a little bigger just in general not just the text so uh the scale is one for one let's change let's two by let's say 1.5 two by two scale it up maybe i'll make this a little bigger let's just scale this out a little more there that's that's good let's see how this looks in the game oh yeah that's good right there and i'll just i'll just leave the color like this for now you can you can play around with the colors to see what you want for your for your color and one of the things here is that and it wasn't on the other button is that you can change up the colors depending on what you're doing with it so you can see that says highlighted color actually let's let me show you this actually so let's change the highlighted color to red and let's change this color to press let's change it to just like this purple color and just to show you the different features here when i push play and i go over the button when I, and I'm not pushing on anything, I'm just mousing over it. It turns this red color, and when I push it, it turns this purple color. And these are some of the features that you have here in the button feature to allow you to have different effects on your button. And actually, I'm going to change these back a little bit. When I wave over it, let's just make it sort of pinkish. I guess that's good. And when we press it, let's just let's bring it back to red. Put it in the corner. Let's bring it back to red. And when we press it, we'll make it just a slightly darker red. And we'll, we'll just leave it like that. It really doesn't make too much of a difference at this point. Actually, we got the save. So or I, or I had it in play. So I have to go back anyway. Actually, I'll just leave it for now so we don't waste any more time. So now we're going to make another button. We're just going to click right on our play button here. We're going to right click. We're going to go down to duplicate. And then we're going to rename this button and we're going to call it quit. So we'll have one button in which we press it and we'll play our main scene. And then we'll have another button that will allow us to quit the game if we want. So let me see how this lines up. All right, that's good for now. And then we're going to go to text and in our text box here, we're going to just write quit. There we go. And now we're going to go up here and in our canvas, we're going to create an empty game object and we're going to call it main menu. And we're going to take our two buttons and we're going to put it in this game object. And now we're going to add a script to add some functionality to our menu here. We're going to go up to our main menu. We're going to click on it. And actually, let's open up our scripts first, and then we'll right click. We'll go up to create, create C sharp script. We'll just simply call this main menu. Then we'll go up to our main menu game object here, and we'll grab this and we'll add it to our game object. We'll open this up and we'll get rid of all of that and what we have to do is we have to add another using library here because well we need one the the functions we're going to be using are not in any of these so we have to call it using unity engine dot scene management with a semicolon at the end so now we're going to just create a function public void 
and we'll just simply call it play game have a parentheses and then set of brackets and now I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to load a scene the first one is the simplest we're just going to put scene manager dot load scene and then a parentheses and inside this we're going to put a set of quotation marks and all you have to do is put the name of the scene that you want to load it and here we have the next scene we want to load is this sample scene oops that's not in that it's in this folder right here with scene so we have the sample scene folder right here so that's what we want to put here right now and then put a semicolon at the end and then we're going to hit save now we're going to go back into unity and let this load and then we have to go to our play button and now over here on our play button if we scroll down it says on click which is our left click and it says the list is empty we haven't added anything to it we're going to hit this plus sign and then it wants a excuse me wants us to put a game object in here well that game object is our main menu we're going to click on that and we're going to drag it over here and then it says right here no function it needs us to pick a function so then we have to go here and under i'm sorry we have to go down here under main menu and in here is our play game function that we created right here so now what we have to do is we have to add our scene to the build settings so we're going to go up here to file and we're going to go down here to build settings and in it there are there's a lot of things here we'll be discussing these in another video but as you can see, we have scenes in build. So let's go to our scenes and let's add our scenes. And the first one we're going to do is we're going to add our main scene, our main menu. And that's going to be given a number zero. And that's going to come into play later. And I want to show you another way to do this. And the second one is the sample scene, which is one. And we don't have to build or hit build run. We can simply just place them in there like that. So let's go ahead and hit play and then hit this play and then it will take us to our sample scene. So let's turn this off. Let's go. I would just sent us right back to our original scene. And so another way you can do this is that let's go back to that build settings right here. And like I said, it, it loaded the first one in order as zero and one. So it's good to put your scenes in the order you want them and you can also deactivate them if you if you said well I don't want this to this scene here but I don't want to necessarily delete it maybe I'll come back in later you can simply check and uncheck it like that so we'll close that out and then we're going to go back to our script and instead of sample scene we can just simply put this number one just like that and hit save and then go back here let it load hit play and now it'll do the same thing and so the last way to do this is we're going to go back into our script and in the parentheses here for the scene manager dot loads excuse me load scene we're going to put scene manager dot get active scene then a parentheses then we're going to put a dot and then build index plus one and we're going to close our parentheses and basically what we're saying is that we want to load the active scene which is the scene we have here that we're working with right now our main menu and if you remember in the build settings i'll show it to you one more time in the build settings the active scene we're in is main menu and it's designated number zero and the next one's number one. So what we're saying is that take the active scene and just add one. So it's zero, it adds one. So number one is the sample scene. So we're gonna hit save and we're gonna go back into them, our scene here and we're gonna hit play and it'll do the same thing.
And lastly, we'll get to work on our quit button. So we're going to go back to our main menu script. And this will be even shorter than the previous code. We're just going to put void. We're simply going to call this quit. We're going to put a parentheses, brackets, and then we're just going to simply write or type application dot quit just like that end with a semicolon and actually what we're gonna do is because when we hit the quit button we the game won't actually quit so we're just going to put debug dot log and then in here we're just gonna write quit and then put out the ad at the end to make sure it works. So, like I said just previously, when when we're inside the entity editor, when we hit quit, it won't quit. You would have to publish the game first. So this tells us that our code is working. You go back into Unity. We're going to let this load a second. And then we're going to attach this just like we did the other button we're going to go down and we have our on click list is empty we're going to add one no object is here we're going to add our main menu object in here and then there's no function so we're going to go down to our main menu and place our quit function in there now we're going to go hit play and we're going to hit quit and I should see it right there, it just says quit. And it happens every time I hit it. When the game is published, then the game will quit. The application will exit. Well, that's it for today. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and support me on Patreon. And a big thanks to all my Patreon supporters. All links are in the description below. See you next time.